in order to prepare to teach about sort of the fundamentals of your priorities of, survivals and, of survival and the materials that you may need to gather. Um, I have this tarp shelter with a bunch of items underneath that I'd like to present to you just so you can see kind of what was in my head when I was preparing to do this video. So behind me here, I basically just have a bunch of sticks, um, some thicker than others, some drier and dead, some live. Uh, I'm gonna use them to show some carving techniques. Um, I also have half of a piece of aspen that I builded in half, which we'll talk about later, but um, I'm gonna use this to create a bowl from. I have a variety of dry materials for my tinder bundle. This can mean dried grasses, pine needles, bark from a cottonwood tree, um, also from juniper and from sagebrush. So I've harvested some of these. I'm also making sure that they stay dry. The tinder nest material is the most important part when you're trying to produce a fire. So having wet material is a huge disadvantage. If you can harvest this and keep it dry, that's a really, really smart thing to do. Uh, I also have a bow drill friction fire set. I have some different type of hand sockets, stone and wood, um, my bow drill itself. I really like jute or Cecil twine for a lot of different reasons. Um, I have some really lightweight, easy snares that I can use. I've prepared a number of Paiute deadfall traps um, and some variations thereof, and we're also going to make some uh, later. If you don't have the opportunity to uh, process uh, sinew for cord for let's say a bow for a bow and arrow uh, you can get waxed thread now there are better and worse choices um, try and find a product that has a really high strength to it um, and that the wax works well so that it sticks to itself we'll talk about this later when we fletch an arrow or a dart I have an old little Outhood can, uh, and you can carry lots of different things in this. Medicine, things you want to keep dry. Maybe you have like a cotton ball that has Vaseline all over it, which is a really nice way to start a fire and keep a flame. I'm going to show you another use for it a little bit later once we get a fire going. Um, kind of like my shop towel to make sure that my skin stays exfoliated. I don't mind having a little mirror to check myself out. Also, it works as a great signaling mirror. We'll also talk about that when we talk about getting rescued. Um, I've gathered a number of rocks here. The way they're set up right now, they're actually in what's called a Karen form. When you stack multiple rocks on top of each other, it's an indication of usually a trail marker, but it's also something that is obviously man-made. So if someone were to stumble upon it, they would know that another person had been there. And if you're trying to be found, um, doing something like creating Karens or taking sticks and sticking them straight into the ground, this is something that is not natural. It's an indication of human uh, presence. And so if you're trying to leave a trail for someone else or to be seen, you wanna create things that are not natural, even if you're using natural materials. Um, I'm also going to use these to demonstrate how to get a quick blade. Uh, this is a rock that's heavy in quartz and we'll talk about conchoidal fracture and why it works very well. I also have here some food that I would pack with me. I'm a huge fan of flour uh, for the carbohydrates, really easy to make um, bread on hot coals, no big deal. Also, if for some reason I've been able to trap any type of game or small game, mouse, whatever, I can make a pita pocket and make it taste that much more delicious. So I find that carrying a bag full of flour is something that's really good for me. Um, on that note, I also like taking, um, what you call it, uh, soup cubes. What's the name for that? Bouillon. Bouillon, yeah. Vegetable bouillon, beef bouillon, whatever you want. High in salt, great in flavor, especially if you uh, don't have the full palate of the wilderness and find that everything tastes kind of gross, which it doesn't. It doesn't, you just have to get used to it. Um, on that note, my main food that I carry with me if I'm just going out for a few days or if I want to practice some of these more primitive uh, hunting skills is pemmican. So 
what it is is dried jerky dried berries and fat. The dried jerky and berries are ground almost to um, sort of a powder form. I mean, as close as you can get, you add a little bit of fat and then you're able to kind of squish it into a ball and it holds its shape. Uh, it is actually delicious. It's the original power bar. Um, you know, many native peoples around the world have used pemmican as a traveling food. So I can get a ton of calories, a ton of protein, some sugar from these fruits, um, and pack it with me and carry it with me and uh, stay pretty well fed um, as I complement this with wild greens and more meat that I'm able to procure. Well, pemmican is a great, great thing to have. Uh, I also have, actually I'll come back to that. I also have a lot of parachute cord. So the wonderful thing about pea cord or parachute cord is that it is actually, usually, seven different strands that are um, encapsulated by a larger tubing. And in a bind, this is 550, 550 pound cordage. That's its strength. That's how much weight can be put on it before it breaks. Each individual strand can be pulled out, connected to each other, and you're able to extend the amount of rope that you have. Um, one strand, I believe, is closer to 30, 35 pounds, but you can still do a lot with that. So having rope is critical for a lot of different reasons. Uh, so I definitely, I'm gonna use this and we'll talk about it more later. Um, what else? I have a buckskin hide. Um, which can be made into a lot of things, possible bags, clothing, um, another, you know, resource for warmth. I mostly brought it just so that I could have contrast with the ground as I lay things out for the camera, but good thing to have. Um, I made an atlatl, a quickie atlatl, um, and we're gonna talk about some hunting tools and make some darts and uh, discuss tracking and um, ways to prepare yourself to become a good silent hunter. Uh, I have a poncho in the back here. It's a military grade poncho. It's very thick, very durable, won't rip quickly. I use this to protect myself for the rain. I can use this to make shelters, um, a very handy tool. Just like my VersaCloth, though this one is wool, and keeps me warm, um, I can use my poncho, just like this cloth, to gather a lot of supplies and be able to haul them to the area that I want them. So it's great. Uh, I also, of course, have maps with me. And if you are not intending on having, being in a survival situation, you should certainly prepare accordingly. Uh, we began by speaking about the clothing gear that you're gonna wanna take with you. Uh, maps and a compass, certainly a smart idea. Get to know the area before you get out there. Um, and keep these dry. Oftentimes I'll put them in a Ziploc bag um, and carry them on my person. And we'll talk about maps a little later as well. Uh, other things that you want to carry on your person is your survival kit. So um, <clears throat> I was gifted this little Yeti bag by one of my brothers. It's actually supposed to attach to a different type of cooler. But I sewed some straps on the back of it. And I can use it like a fanny pack. Any survival kit that you're taking with you needs to be on your person. If it is in your pack and you need to drop your pack for some reason, maybe you're sliding down a cliff face or you find yourself um, being carried away by water, you know, you wanna make sure that you're releasing your main pack, but that you have your key items on you. So my key items would be my knife, which is always on my person, and I have other knives that I would pack in my bag along with a saw, which I'll show you, um, and this kit, and this is out of it right now, but this is <laughs> supposed to be inside. Some form of water for purification um, is 
So smart. This way you don't have to have a fire to boil water. You don't need to find techniques to purify and filter it. You know, you just can can go. I really enjoy this stuff called Aquamira. It's a chlorine dioxide. And basically um, it is effective in killing bacteria, um, viruses, protozoa, waterborne diseases that can be really awful on your system. What happens is things like Giardia and Cryptosporidium, um, if you drink water that is not purified and take in some of these harmful microbes, uh, you end up dehydrating yourself more because you start cramping up and then vomiting and diarrhea ensue and you lose mass amounts of water. So if you have the opportunity to treat your water, you always should, no matter what method it is. Um, if you can just carry that filtration and purification system on you, it's definitely something that should be in your survival kit.